JLR does quite a good job recycling this five liter supercharged V8. It's found in anything from a Range Rover SVR to the F-Type, and in this, a Jag Jaguar, Jaguar, I'm just call it Jag, Jag F-Pace SVR, or as I like to call it, the F-Pace, because it's kind of an interesting name. The F-Type sounded cool, the F-Pace, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but SVR means this is the top tier performance version. 5 liter supercharged V8, making 550 horsepower and 502 pound-feet of torque. Eight-speed automatic transmission, all-wheel drive, and since it's essentially identical powertrain to the SVR Range Rover, which is a lot bigger, this is smaller, lighter, and much faster and much more fun to drive. The F-Pace is a really good-looking crossover. Even in regular, like 25T, the lower engines, it's a good-looking vehicle. And with the SVR, they turn it up. This is ultra-blue paint, which looks awesome in the sun. We got 22 inch wheels blacked out, red calipers. You cannot get carbon ceramics on this though, so it's steel brakes only. Larger intakes on the front. The overall look of it is just, it's a great proportion, great size. I mean, Jaguar is known for making very good looking crossovers, and you can see a lot of design cues too. The F-Type kind of tail light shape out back, quad exhaust tips. I really, really like the way this looks. But how does it drive? Because 550 horsepower super SUV crossover thing, better be a lot of fun to drive. So let's hop in and talk about the interior, what it's like to drive, and the value. We've got the SVR in dynamic mode, a five liter supercharged V8 making 550 horsepower. And wow, does it sound good. But first, first let's talk about the interior. It's nice, but is it the nicest in a segment? Absolutely not. It honestly has some parts that feel a little bit on the cheaper side, especially given the price tag of this is almost $100,000. As stickered, this is a $95,000 SUV. It has the creature comforts, it has some of the technology, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, it has uh, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, so it checks those boxes, panoramic roof, Alcantara headliner, but then there are some touch points that feel a little plasticky and some parts where when you touch them or knock on them, it did feel a little hollow, just not quite as premium as some of the German ones, definitely not compared to like a Porsche or even in the same family, a Range Rover SVR does feel a little more solid. Now, some of those have a higher price point, but that's the impression I get inside the F-Pace. Now, these seats are very comfortable. They hold you in nicely. We've got a really cool quilted diamond pattern to them. Everything kind of goes out the window. You don't really care about it as much when you hear that exhaust and the noises it makes and the pops and cracks, and it's properly fast. 550 horsepower out of the supercharged V8 uh, with an eight-speed automatic transmission, all-wheel drive. But the problem is, in America, the SVR model, now this is the SVR, is offered with all-season tires. This thing is on all-seasons, and when you have that much power, you really want like full performance tires when it's warm out. And then if you really want to drive it in the winter, because again, it is a practical crossover, you're going to want to have winter tires. So it's, it's kind of a weird oversight for them to do that. And I know it's definitely hurt its ratings, the speed, the performance, braking, handling, everything, because all season is not as good as uh, summer tires. Oh God, the sound. The F-Pace is still pretty good to drive. In comparison to uh, other full-size SUVs, it does feel more nimble, more like a, like a sports sedan that's a little bit taller than your conventional big lumbering SUV. The biggest problem the F-Type SVR is facing, F-Type, F-Pace SVR is facing right now is I've been driving a Stelvio Quadrifoglio for the past couple of days, and that is definitely one of the best handling crossovers out there. And it feels a little bit sharper than this. The steering on this feels a little bit looser. Uh, this definitely sounds better. The Stelvio is slightly faster. So it's like a toss up. You get the British approach to this type of vehicle or you get the Italian exoticness. 
So to wrap up a couple more thoughts about the interior, we've got buttons here with an updated touchscreen, which is a good infotainment, but like some of this backlighting, the ambient lighting looks a little bit on the cheesier side. This not quite as premium or modern as some of the other offerings out there. A nice big digital display screen in the middle, which no complaints there. Heads up display, which is definitely good. The Stelvio Quadrifolio I'm driving right now does not have that. Complaints. The window switches are here up top, which I think is a Jag Land Rover thing because all the Range Rovers are like that too. But I'm used to having them down here kind of uh, on the armrest, but that's where the memory seat settings and unlock button are. So I definitely have gone to hit the window switch a couple times and been over here and tried to change my memory seat, which I get minor, minor little quibbles there. Um, the paddle shifters are steering wheel mounted. Column mounted paddle shifters are better at performance vehicles, but at the end of the day, this is a performance crossover and practicality comfort is of a higher priority than a dedicated sports car or sports sedan. Decent sized trunk out back. Uh, it wasn't that comfortable for me because we couldn't easily remove the cargo cover. We didn't want to because it's bunt in in a bunch of different ways, uh, but good enough space on the inside, good headroom. This is just kind of stream of consciousness car reviewing right now, just kind of all over the place. But we have a little overpass here and I'm gonna make some noise. That was a rev limiter, whoops. Still, wow. In terms of value, the F-Pace SVR is expensive, but it's pretty much in line with the competition. As equipped, this one stickers for just around $95,000, and it's loaded with the carbon fiber pack, the 22-inch wheels blacked out, ultra blue paint, the driver tech features, panoramic sunroof. The Stelvio Quadrifolio, I keep bringing that up because I've been driving it for the last couple days and it's on my mind, also stickered for $96,000. And that one, a big chunk of the price is from the $8,000 carbon ceramic brakes. You can't get carbon ceramic brakes here on the F-Pace SVR, no matter how much you spend. Uh, so this definitely has more equipment, heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel, a couple more things, little toys there. Is it a good value? Um, I don't think I can say yes, because I don't think any of these vehicles are good value because there's something like the Jeep Trackhawk out there. If you just want all our performance in a luxury SUV that has luxury touches, the Trackhawk is very, very difficult to argue against because it makes 707 horsepower. And then if you want true more luxurious things, you can spend this kind of money on a regular Range Rover Sport or something that's going to be more spacious and more comfortable. This is for somebody who I think is considering a sports sedan, maybe like a, uh, a Panamera or something like that, but they want a little more of the British flair, they want the sound, it definitely has the power, and they want a taller vehicle. So final verdict, what do I think about the F-Pace SVR? I really like the modern Jaguars. The F-Type is, I think, one of the best looking sports cars from the money. They sound amazing and they're pretty fun to drive. And I think the F-Pace SVR has a similar type of thing. It's one of the best looking crossovers you can buy in the segment. The exterior sheet metal looks really nice, especially finished in this ultra blue paint. It is absolutely, likely the best sounding SUV you can buy. I'm trying to think of something. I thought the Stelvio Quad was a good sounding thing. And then we were driving next to this and I was like, what? That's not fair. This thing sounds way better. Uh, maybe Trackhawk definitely sounds cool with the supercharger and wine with, the, with that Hellcat motor. Let's see how fast this thing feels. Woohoo! All right. Very fast. It is 550 horsepower. <laughs> what is it doing here now? The center, the center console has changed into a very high definition picture of the F-Pace SVR. I don't know why it's doing this. Oh, ooh, what just happened? Did I just factory reset the car? What just happened? Anyways, I keep coming back to the same tunnel because... <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, final verdict. While a Stelvio Quadrifolio drives better, I like the handling feeling of that more. I think the steering's a little more direct. The weighting feels better. This might be more fun because it sounds so much better. You have a big smile on your face when you're driving and you just, as soon as you see a red light, you're like, awesome, I can floor it and hear that supercharged V8 go. It's comfortable. The interior trimmings overall are nice. It has a couple touches where if you're in a lot of these competitive vehicles like I have the fortune to be in and around all the time and compare them back to back, um, you'll notice things. Otherwise, it's still, I mean, it's a very, very nice place to be. It has a newer tech. I think, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's. Um, one of the best looking 
sedan, not sedans, I can't talk, one of the best looking SUVs in this segment. With that, we'll end this review. Make sure you guys check out the ownership video. Me and Preston talk about bit why he chose this, what he likes about it, a lot more insights. Again, he's had this car for a lot longer than I've been driving it. Uh, and then I mentioned the Stelvio a bunch, so stay tuned for that video. I've been spending a week with the Stelvio Quadrifoglio, which is another performance SUV in this segment. I am going to go floor it, make some more crackles and pops and noises with a big smile on my face. Thanks for watching, guys. Woohoo! Ah, that's fun. Ah, that's fun.